USB is essentially ubiquitous. Every computer will have it. Not, ev not every DAC has it right now. Um, and that's something that's changing slowly, but uh, the, the plan would be that you would have your favorite software program at home, which can play, let's say, MP3, it can play WAV, it can play FLAC, it can play DSD in various formats, and it spits it out through USB into a, a D2A converter made by something like Andreas, which is very flexible and says, okay, in comes MP3, I can play that. In comes PCM, I can play that. In comes DSD, I can play that. And you as the user then don't really ever have to worry whether file number one is PCM or file number two is DSD or MP3 or WAV or FLAC or whatever. Is that correct? Right. You know, uh, the minute you, you put it on a disk, uh, it's always limited in terms of flexibility. You know, the format, the sample rate is dictated by the physical format, CD and SSCD. Um, as we know, there's more and more high-resolution recordings, um, including DSD and double-rate DSD, and you know you cannot play those from CD or SSCD unless it's that particular sample rate. Uh, you know, with a PC or a computer-based uh, playback system, and you you start building your library over time and time. Now you have the flexibility to take in anything new that comes down the pike and, and play it. At the uh, Newport Beach show uh, in the Sony room, we ran tests the whole weekend, listening tests, and it was pretty striking. I walked in, Yuki had it set up. We were listening to DSD files he had downloaded from our site, the Emily Palin disc, which is a very good disc for testing a system. Solo violin, no compression, no EQ. I did the mastering, I know everything about this disc. We had it on SACD. He had um, a $25,000 SACD player there, and he had a system which was the files, um, it was pure music and it was his, you know, a mini Mac. And it was stunning, the difference. Uh, listening to the DSD audio files compared to, you know, with basically at that point was maybe $3,000 worth of an investment versus a $25,000 investment on SACD. And John Atkinson was stunned and he wrote a, a wonderful little piece in Stereophile about it. Uh, I was blown away. We have our PC, got a little uh, DAC, and used Jay Rivers, Jay River Media Player. And it's it was stunning. From three rooms away, I could hear something had changed in the listening room. And I immediately went over. Yes? Just follow on. What, what DA converter was being used for that? Uh, I, I was using the, the MyTac. Yeah. So the playback design is both software and DAC? Is that right? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean with software. Playback software on the PC? No, we don't do that. Uh, we only do the hardware, the DAC, and uh, you know the, uh, the conversion process. So there aren't many USB DACs that do DSD, is there? Um, th there are there are a few, and um, you know when you download the uh, the paper, I have a whole list there of uh, what what the currently available equipment can do. But uh, it has changed over the last uh, few months. You know, we were the first ones to come out with it, and uh, shortly afterwards, there was uh, you know maybe five other manufacturers coming out with it too. And now that we have the standards to use PCM convert, I mean PCM links uh, to ship DSD data across it, uh, it becomes a lot easier for other manufacturers who are basically limited to implement DSD. And these are announced or on the market? DAX, DAX they're, they're on the market. They are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we're trying to keep a list at DSD Guide, and Andreas has been great about sending us any updates. And I get, I get requests from all over the world, actually, about uh, hearing about companies who are working on it, because they need files. And there's very few companies with files. So I, I get to hear first about who's building what where. And I'm amazed. I'm just amazed. And I'm more amazed that the professional audio industry hasn't figured it out. Because what we, 
What you want are real DSD source recordings. I love analog, and we've done the test. My preference is analog, analog tape. Uh, unfortunately, it's <coughs> difficult to ship analog tape around the world and get it to people as quickly as we'd like. DSD is the next best solution. PCM, you know, we give away our MP3s and we deliver PCM files. There's enough players out there for that. But the closest thing to tape for us is DSD. Um, so when we're recording, my preference is to record in analog tape. And then my second choice is DSD. So as a, as a mix down medium, we use DSD. And I feel that that's a very good representation. In fact, I'm proud of the fact that we use analog tape. When we do remote recordings, or as a backup, we'll often record simultaneously to DSD. Because moving a tape machine is not fun. And so in the room next door, we brought our DSD uh, recording gear. You know, we, we don't have it down to a laptop, but basically you can get 24 tracks and have a nice little rack unit and go anywhere and record. In terms of the, um, the library, the, ca the back catalog on analog tape, which is extensive, the difficulty is getting the licensing from the record labels. There's some of these, there's a, a vast library, but the issues are restoration. And you really, you really have to have somebody who understands tape and knows how to bring it back. Um, there's just a lot of issues having to do with restoration. So um, as nice as it may be to think about all the back catalog of analog tape, the reality of bringing it back is ridiculously expensive. So we're right now have made a decision to focus on new recordings. And when there's enough demand, we're hoping that the record labels will be more willing to spend the thousands of dollars to restore the tapes, and that's what it's going to take. Before they demagnetize. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I bring back tapes that are 30, 40 years old. Really, I, huh? I don't think I can bring back some of my PCM recordings. Oh, very good. That that or, yeah. Very good. Yeah, we, we, did, we brought back tapes from the 50s. Wow. Good to know.